on everyone, in this video I'll be talking about 5 SAT strategies to score a 1400 plus on the SAT because it's time for you guys to get the score you want. If you want to score the top 95 to 99 percentile, you need to go for above a 1400. I'm absolutely positive if you implement these strategies in your SAT study routine and when you take the SAT in general, whether it be practice test or the real thing, you're going to see a huge improvement in your score. The very first SAT strategy that I got to tell you all is to read questions first. Now this is obviously SAT reading exclusive. Every time you see a passage, most people what they want to do, they just want to read the passage, right? And then they look at the questions. This is not the best thing to do. In fact, you should be reading the questions first because by doing this, you will have at least some inkling slash something in mind to keep as you read the passage. In other words, I feel like that was weirdly said. Basically, you know what you're looking for when you read the passage if you read the questions first. Like for example, if they ask you what's the main idea of paragraph one, then when you read the passage and you finish paragraph one, you can answer that question right there and then. You don't have to wait for later on where you're kind of confused like, oh wait, what happened in paragraph one? Let me go back and read that. That's the thing you don't want to do guys. You want to minimize the amount of rereads as much as possible for the SAT reading exam. You see, a lot of students, they struggle with time, right? Time management is the biggest thing when it comes to SAT reading. That's most likely because you guys spend too much time reading the passage over and over and over again. And that's what causes you guys to waste that time. If you're able to read it just you know maybe once or twice and able to answer every single question, you're gonna see that you're being able to answer every single question much, much faster, and you're gonna have more time left for the harder passages like the history passages or the passage one, passage two passage. Trust me guys, if you guys don't believe me, the next time you take a practice test, just read the questions first and maybe jot down some of the questions, like the margins of the passage so you know exactly what uh, you're looking for because I don't expect you guys to memorize all 10 questions in your head. Just memorize four or five of them, write some of them down and refer to them as you read and see uh, you know, maybe you found the answer at this point, maybe you found the answer later in the text. Whenever you find the answer, just answer the question. So basically ask the questions as you go and you're gonna see that you know your score will improve. So just try it. Next strategy, and this strategy is something that I struggle with personally because it just I just couldn't get myself to do it. And that's just skip problems, guys. Yeah, and this is, like I said, a really hard thing to do for me and for a lot of students because it's like you're skipping the problem, you're kind of running away from the challenge, but you're not really doing that. So I don't want you to get in that mindset. What you're doing, you're just coming back to it, you know, getting a little stronger, and then you're coming back to it, and then you're beating that challenge, and then you're getting past it. And what you want to do when you do skip problems, this is something that I think a lot of students mess up doing, and they end up forgetting to answer a question on the SAT, which is probably one of the worst things you can do. Right, at least give yourself a chance to get it right. Don't just leave it blank. Make a significant mark on the problem you skip. Like make like a huge star on the SAT booklet or even on the Scantron. But you want to be careful with the Scantrons because any stray marks can mess up your uh, your answer sheet. Maybe on the booklet, have a big star. So when you go back through the problems, you realize that hey, I didn't miss a problem. And what you want to do is right before you do skip the problems, just circle any of the answers. In case, let's say you run out of time and you can't even go back to the, a question that you skipped, you at least have something down. So just do a random guess, right? A or B, in my opinion, you don't do B, don't do A, do B, and then just move on. But just make sure you have a big star next to it so you can actually go back later if you have time and actually understand the problem and try to find a, a strong answer or make an educated guess. The next strategy, this strategy is something you do really post SAT, and that is super score. You see, the super score is when you get your SAT exams, Right, all of them, you find the highest math score and the highest reading score and you put them together, right? And that forms your ultimate SAT score that you send to colleges. This super score strategy is one of the best strategies that you can implement with the SAT because it relieves pressure, right? If you are taking SAT multiple times, you have multiple chances to get either high math or high reading or both, right? So you don't have to worry about, oh man, like if I want to take SAT once, like whatever I get is what I get, this is what colleges see. You know, the super score helps you combine your, your best attempts and that's firstly what I did, right? My first time I got 1530, second time I got 1490. Uh, I combined my scores to get a 1540. So I know it's just plus 10. For, sometimes for a lot of students, they might get plus 60 or plus 70 if they do a super score, which is another reason why I say, you know, take the ST multiple times, and usually two or three times, three times max, because at least you give yourself a chance to super score and potentially get a better score overall, even though your individual scores aren't as high. Next tip, and this is a really good tip that I think a lot of students benefit from that's to put down the calculator. Now this is obviously applies to the ST math calculator section because you see what happens is a lot of students, they hear ST calculator section, right? So they, they have the calculators in their hand, they're, they're ready to use it for the easiest problems. Most of the problems on that section, you actually don't need a calculator for and you generally don't. You can just answer the questions pure using mental math or just pure logic. 
right? The questions aren't easy. There's like easy algebra. And maybe, you know, some problems here and there are going to be calculated, but I remember for one of my SATs, I only use a calculator for maybe like seven or seven problems out of what 36 problems. So that's like not, that's less than, that's about like 20% of the problems. So guys, trust me, you don't need a calculator for every problem. So just put the calculator down. In fact, if you are using a calculator for every single problem, I promise you, you one, you're not solving the problem in the most efficient manner possible. And two, you're wasting your time. And you're probably spending way too much time on a problem and you should be able to answer that quickly. And lastly, your mental map isn't where it should be. You wanna practice your mental map, right? Because that's the way you're able to answer these questions quicker. And that's where you'll be able to actually put down the calculator and not need it. Because the only reason you're using calculator is because you can't do it mentally or by hand, right? So you wanna practice that so that way the calculator is just a last resort type of thing. And as you do more practice, you start to see the problems that actually do require a calculator and the problems that don't require a calculator. And once you tell that difference, you, you know, things start opening up for you. And now the last strategy, and this strategy is what made me honestly even have this channel in the first place. And that is speed running, guys. You wanna practice speed running the SAT, which I know your professors and your teachers always probably say, don't rush, you know, you don't wanna make mistakes. And that's true. Speed running isn't you finish the exam as fast as possible, because if that was the case, you literally circle B for everything and boom, you're done in like five seconds, no. Speed running is answering as fast as possible while having a high accuracy slash, if not 100% accuracy rate. And this is an easy thing for math because for math, you know, I've made videos on this in the past. If you know the patterns, the tips, the tricks, right? Look at my course if you haven't, it has everything included inside of that. Things become simple, right? You're able to see the tips and tricks for every single problem, use them, and you can answer each problem probably within 30 seconds, maybe even 10 seconds for certain problems on the SC math section. And that's why you can see the entire 25 minute section done in like five minutes by people like me or some others, maybe some of your friends, right? For reading, this is obviously much harder because you can't really like speed run passages like that. What you can do is, is like um, skim the passage, but don't skim so fast that you're not comprehending. Skim to the point where you are comprehending everything and you're still understanding everything. And for some people, it might be like a regular speed. Some people honestly can't skim.